Today I'm going to go over how to attach a quarter wrap to a tree. So first thing we're going to need is a sling. So we have two options when it comes to slings and attaching the quarter wrap to the tree. The first one that we have is a dead eye sling. So we have a sling that has a fixed eye on one end and a length of rope. And we would use an appropriate knot to tie the two. The other option we have is a whoopee sling, which has a fixed eye on one end of the sling, and then an adjustable eye on the other end. So we're going to use the whoopee sling. So to attach the whoopee sling to the quarter up, what we need to do is take the fixed eye and pass it through the large eye on the quarter wrap and we take the rest of the sling pass it through that fixed eye and then it gets girthed onto the quarter wrap like that so to actually attach it to the tree all you need to do is take the adjustable eye pass it around your tree and then the eye goes around the quarter wrap and then to adjust it to make that eye smaller all we have to do is pull it in on the tail of the sling and as we go on it's going to adjust our eye smaller and see if it gets a tree for us. So, so once we have that cinched on our quarter wrap is attach the tree and it's ready to be used. So next we'll go over how to properly load the quarter wrap. So first thing we do is form a large bite with a rigging line and we're going to take the bite and we're going to pass it through the small eye on the quarter wrap. So once we pass it through the small eye, we're going to take the bite and go around that short pin so that short pin is a rope retention pin. It's going to stop the rope from sliding off as we're using the porter wrap. Once we have it around there, we can take the line and pull out any slack in our system. So now that we have the slack out of the system, we're ready to start taking the wraps around the porter wrap. And that's what's going to create a friction for us. So when you're taking the wraps around the porter wrap, you always want to go over top of the barrel and always wrap in one direction. So what you don't want to do, you can see the rope comes out, goes across the top. What you want to make sure is that when the rope comes out, you don't pass it underneath the barrel and then make your wraps. If you do, what will happen is you can see as the rope comes out and goes around the bar, it creates a pinching point for the rope. So that would be, this would be improper. So always make sure when you come out through the bar and start taking your turns around the barrel, wrap over top of the barrel first to take your wraps. Now if we want to lock this rope off so that it can't move on us, we're going to use the pin on the end and we're going to tie it off the same fashion as if we are tying a rope off to a cleat uh, on a boat. So we're going to take a turn around the pin on the bottom. So in this case it comes out the left side, so on the top side we're going to go around the right side of the pin. And then we're going to alternate sides to start forming the crisscross pattern or the figure eight pattern around the pin. So once we've gone around the top pin once, the bottom pin once, to finish this off, what we're going to do is we're going to take, again, another biter rope. This time we're going to twist it in on itself and go around the top pin and it's going to cinch against that tail. Once you do it on the top, just repeat the process on the bottom. And now the rope is locked off and won't go anywhere.